this is going to come down now to diagnosis. So I know there's genetic testing. The question I am sure that comes up is does everybody with the genetic predisposition to this disease develop the disease? Because the question that would come to my mind if I were somebody at risk is, are you going to tell me I'm going to get it, but then I won't? Yeah, and I think that's one of the most challenging things for families that know that this runs in their family is that um, it is an autosomal dominant disorder and so you have a one in two chance of inheriting um, the predisposition to this disease from your parent if your parent is affected. Um, but it's difficult to predict when in your life you're actually going to start manifesting symptoms if you are affected as a carrier. Um, and so people face the choice of when in their life do they choose to pursue genetic testing and if they know that information, um, how will that affect their thinking about their future and their uh, overall life goals and other things? So I think that can be a really challenging ethical discussion. Uh, for example, do you test a child? If a parent is affected, most people would say no because uh, the, the information wouldn't change anything about the management of the child at the time in the classical natural history. Um, and you want a person to make an informed decision about whether they want to know that information. So you would wait until they were um, cognitively able to go through that process for themselves. Um, but then sometimes people's perspectives on that also changes as their life changes through their own experiences. And so this can be a really challenging well, uh, 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 ethical issue. But let me nail several questions here so that we really have at least address them. We can then dismiss them. Does everybody who has the genetics for Huntington's actually get the disease? I think if you have a short enough repeat length, you may just be able to pass it along, but you may not actually manifest right. symptoms. Yourself. So that even if you get tested, it doesn't guarantee, and they say, look, you've got this, this genetic predisposition, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get sick. Right. Well, that's a heck of a test, you know. And then it occurs to me that there are some points in your life you might want to be tested. Certainly, if you're two years old, maybe not. If you're about to get married and considering children, maybe. And then older, um, you want to know about yourself and how to make plans. Is, do people talk to you about that? Sure. I think, um, you know, we see this in many rare diseases where, um, you know, it, it's in your family, it's passed down to you, and you're not sure whether you may be affected or not. Um, there are major points in life where we see people with rare diseases making tough decisions about whether to find out, whether to have children. Um, and, you know, these, these are tough decisions to make, but, you know, for, for family planning purposes, it's important. But it's hard. It, it's it's really hard. It's very difficult. I don't know. I mean, what would be worse, do you think, maybe you know better than I, to live in a state of blissful, maybe not so blissful ignorance, mm -hmm. or to sit there knowing that you're genetically predisposed, maybe you'll get it, maybe you won't. What's harder for people? Gosh, uh, you know, I think... I think there's challenges with both. I can't imagine personally um, knowing that something is running in my family and there could be a chance that I may get it and choose not to find out because you never know when the other shoe will drop. On the other hand, um, finding that information out and, and knowing that you, know, you are inevitably going to be you know, faced with having to deal with the disease, um, I think both are both are very challenging. I mean, for other diseases, not Huntington's. Mm -hmm. I've heard people express both sides of the coin. Sure. Or, and one of the things they say is, if, if, if the shoe's going to drop anyway, right. what difference does it make if I know it's coming, other right. than for planning purposes for my family or something else? That makes sense. But it must be difficult. It, it is difficult. I think that there are pros and cons for both, but I think knowing what you may be facing in the future does allow you to plan um, not only for family planning purposes, but, you know, for your own um, personal, um, you know, plans, whether you may need to consider um, future living options, maybe you may need to consider, um, you know, additional care in the future, maybe you may need to consider moving into an, an advanced care facility. And so knowing all of that, knowing that that may be in your future, you'll be able to plan for it um, financially and personally.